I'm looking forward to working again. I feel like that I'm, I'm, I'm at a place where, um, you know, if, if a project presented itself in um, Atlanta, call us. Um, I also have another film that I, I'm about to start shooting in two weeks. Um, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the music kick. Like, I think as soon as we wrap Friends and Family Hustle, I might start, um, you know, diving back into music a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't wait. I miss it. Yeah, I got <laughs> so much on my heart to talk about and share. Yeah. And I'm a love song girl. Like, I, you know, a lot of people know me as the breakup queen. Like, I'm, you know, I'm talking <laughs> about how you broke my heart and da 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 da. And it, it's, I want to find a good, fun mix of that because people yeah. are getting their heart broken every single day. And I heal through music. So that's mm -hmm. why I always, you know, love singing the torns and the regrets because I've been that girl. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I am that girl. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And who, who's gone through those situations before. And I used to listen to the Tony Braxton's, the Mary J. Blige's, the Whitney Houston's, and heal through their music. Right. So it, it's awesome to know that people listen to some of my records um, and, and connect mm -hmm. the same way. So I'm going to get in the studio again and, and you know, get, get y'all a little music. Um, but it's a lot. You know, yeah. and I'm a brand ambassador. So when people are. With a casting agent and performing the scene, you're doing it. At See, in a pandemic. Right. But yeah. the ball is still rolling. <laughs> yes. So do you feel that like mompreneurs like have to do it all? Like, what's your thought? Yes. On <laughs> yes, it will. It, it, it feels that way. You know, yeah. um, it feels that way. Uh, there are a lot of times the weight and the pressure is uh, on us, even if there is a husband in the house, because, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, moms always have to be present, especially when the kids are small. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're breastfeeding or if you're, you know, whatever, your mom mm -hmm. and trying to be present with the kids, but also take care of yourself, find balance with all of that and having a business and you know, trying to still be creative and come up with new ideas. It can be challenging at times. So you really do, most of the time, I feel like I'm wearing a cape around here. Mm -hmm. I'm literally having to be in six yes. places at one time <laughs> mentally. Yep. Like doing my work, but I'm sitting up here like, wait, counting down the hours. When was the last time that I breastfed? Okay, I got about an hour on that. And then Gianna didn't get her nap, although she was supposed to go down at this time. She didn't, so she's probably sleepy and hungry right now. So I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and I got to make sure that I film this. <laughs> All of that at the same time. Oh, tomorrow. Okay, wait, I got to do. It's just nonstop. Yeah. Um, and of course, like I said, I'm blessed to have my mom here, kind of helping me with that. Uh, not kind of all the way helping me with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I feel like I'm having to do it all. And, and being that I, since I feel that way, um, yes, it feels heavy, but I'm just, be I also feel so blessed to be in this place. Mm -hmm. I'm so blessed to be a mom. I don't take that for granted. There's so many women out there that can't say that they're, you know, that they have a, a kid that they're going to look after and that's one of their heart's desires. So I'm so blessed and I don't take that for granted. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've lost a baby before, so I get it. Um, yeah. I, I'm blessed to have a job in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm blessed in so many ways. Um, I'm able to take care of my kids financially. Um, but at the same time, it ain't always easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, my, my, my brain is, I do feel like I'm having to do it all or it will fall. That's how it, we take that on. Do you, do you, tell me if you agree with that. Like, even though, you know, we have people, our husbands or the uh, other people around the daycares, it's almost like you have to feel like you're doing it all mm -hmm. or things are going to fall apart. Like, yeah, or no. maybe that's my personality. It's no, it's, I think that that's normal. And that's what I was just going to say. And then you also suffer with mommy guilt too. Like, I mean, I know I do, you know, sometimes. And the thing is, it's, we're not supposed to be guilty, right? Because, um, 
you are doing everything that you can possibly do. Like, I know you're a good mother. I know you are doing everything to provide for your children. And it's like, it just comes over all of us because we are good mothers and because we want the best and because we want to keep working. Like, and that's the thing that, you know, I'm blessed to say that I can be a businesswoman and raise my kids. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't, I don't know if you saw it, but I didn't see that. Like it was either you had to stay at home and cook and clean and walk around pregnant and keep having babies. Yes. And your husband was the breadwinner. But now it's like women, we are, we are taking back our power. Like we are able to do it all. We are able, yes, super women. Like you said, let me put on my cake because yeah. we are able to balance all of that. Like you can be a mom. You can do everything that you set your heart too okay whatever your heart desires you can have it all and yeah. you know when when my kids were younger i was actually working as a nurse so i was not an entrepreneur but i used to work nights i had to work weekends and i felt so bad that i had to work weekends and nights and be away from my kids and i was like yeah. that type of mom that you know i gave my husband a, a schedule like you feed her at this time you change her diaper at this time her nap time is at this time so it's it's normal to just want to feel like you're you got to do everything and you also have to tell other people that are your your children are with what to do as well because these are your babies like you want to make sure that you're protecting them and you are you know nurturing them even when you have to work so don't yes. ever feel bad that you know you feel like you want to do everything but i just want to tell you that you are doing a great job okay thank you i'm trying sis <laughs> so don't don't Look ever trying <laughs> you All are. I can do is try. Yes. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad that I have people around me that remind me of that. You know, yeah. uh, you know, to have a great support system and and people that are patting you on the back and rooting for you and saying, "I see you doing your best." Yeah. I see you giving okay. your all. It kind of lightens the mommy guilt. Um, yeah. And like you said, back in the day, uh, that was the mom's job or her only focus. She didn't have to worry about making sure the lights stayed on or um, making sure the kids were fed, buying the groceries and cooking it. I mean, you know, nowadays, it's like you're expected to do it all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole nother discussion for another day, another. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but it's, it's, it's already hard enough, you know, being a mom. Yeah. On yeah. top of a mom that is out here wanting to help provide for the household. Yeah. Um, yeah. And don't be afraid to accept help. I think that's something that we also struggle with. Like, don't be afraid. Yeah. If your mom is like, hey, Latoya, listen, I have the kids this weekend. Girl, go out and have your girl time. Go out yeah. to the school. Whatever it is that you go take a bath, you know. <laughs> yeah, Whatever it's okay. Like, yes. you know, be open to receive help you know, from trustworthy people. Yeah, I have no problem. I'm very blessed to have my mom who, that's her grandkids up there. Yeah. I know she loves them. I know that she would, you know, do everything in her power to protect them. Um, and during this pandemic, it has been very hard to even think about uh, interviewing nannies or bringing someone in a new energy mm -hmm. into the home when one that's already been a scary thing before the pandemic now add on the pandemic where you don't know their whereabouts you don't know you know if they've come in, you know they've been exposed and now they're around your newborn like mm -hmm. it's so many things to think about um and you know for a while i did feel like wow you know my mom is here i'm blessed to have that but i do i do have the mommy guilt still and i had to be talked out of that i had to i had some great friends that was like yo do you know how many people would, I mean, give anything to one, have their mom in the house, mm -hmm. allowing them to have free time. You feel comfortable leaving your kids with your mom. So mm -hmm. she's supporting your career, helping you set up the ring light when it's time to do the interviews. If you can't cook, she can't. Like it's all these different things. And I, I think that I was kind of feeling guilty about it or made, made, being made to feel guilty about it. And that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I, I say to every woman out there, like, sis, don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say, hey, 
I'm feel like I'm drowning over here. Help me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why God places these people in your life, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Um, it doesn't make you a bad mom. It doesn't make you less than a mom. It doesn't make you, it's still, you still got your cape on. You're still a hero. <laughs> it's you making a smart decision. It's yeah. you not overloading or uh, overexerting it, yourself, you know, overwhelming yourself. Um, yeah. And do what you got to do. Do what yeah. you got to do to keep your sanity, sis. Like that's called taking care of yourself. Yeah. And like we just said in the beginning, it's called, if you want to pour from a full cup, this is what you got to do to fill your cup up. And it, it, it goes back to that saying. And then remember, like, the enemy wants us to feel guilty. The enemy wants to condemn us. So I always, again, that's that negative thought. When you get that negative thought, you got to replace it with his truth. And we know that he is not a God to make us feel guilty, right? God blessed you with the gift. And he blessed you with the resources and the path to fulfill your gift, right? And he's going to place people in, those path, in, in your path to help you accomplish who you have been called to to do to be right yeah. and so yeah. you got we just got to remind ourselves so i know that's what i do when i start to feel guilty like okay i know this is the enemy and negative thoughts kicking in so let me reject and rebuke those thoughts because yeah. god does not want me to feel guilty god wants me to live a peaceful life come on right? and so <laughs> when when that that enemy of guilt comes in remember that's also something that's trying to steal your peace. It may not be in the flesh or it may not be something that somebody said. It's a feeling and it's still an enemy of feeling, right? An emotion that may try to take over us, but you got to reject and rebuke it. Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have yeah, a my oil. This is my oil, okay? My, my holy water and everything. And where's my all now? <laughs> you have to... <laughs> So this was this was amazing. So before we close out, I do want to ask you like to drop some nuggets. So if there are any like moms, aspiring entrepreneurs, like what advice would you give any mom that that wants to start a business or that's currently in business? Like what what advice would you give her to maintain that that balance or you know I don't like to say balance. I like to say prioritize because there's no such thing as balance. But what advice would you give them? I will say this, and I, I it's so funny on my check-ins, I often run into people um, who are wanting to start a business and they're afraid, and especially during these times. Yeah. And I'm like, what's keeping you from leaping? Are you mm -hmm. going to consistently allow fear to control your life? Mm -hmm. Why are you afraid of the no? Because that's, that's the only thing you can get, a yes or no. And the no for me pushed me further Mm -hmm. um it, it made me go harder you know what I mean so I think for moms out there especially who probably feel like man I don't have the time I need to focus on my kids I need to make sure this is happening you if you get your balance together if you you know prioritize things there's always time even if it's starting in the middle of the night when yes. the kids are sleeping yep. and everything is quiet in the house duck off and start your business plan. If you can give it 30 minutes to an hour a day just to start, you will be amazed at what you can come up with. Meditation will help you come up with those creative ideas. You can, I, I'm telling you, in my meditation is when I feel most creative. And I go, oh, yeah, wait, okay, but how would I do that? And da, da, da. Like, start investing thinking time into it. There's nothing, even if you're, even if you're at your pay job already, that's, you know, helping you keep the lights on, there's nothing stopping you for thinking and creating in your mind. That's where it starts. A business plan, how you want to roll things out, how you can, you know, bring this, this company and, and, you know, make it come alive some, in some kind of way. There is time, sis, if God put it in you, if God put it in you, it's there for a reason. It's a part of your purpose. Yes. And don't, there's so many, there's graveyards full of people who had gifts and purpose and never tapped into it because they were afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be one of those people. Mm -hmm. Don't be one of those people. I was shut down so many times. One, I started shutting myself down first before the rest of the world could have shut me down. I used to shut me down first, right? When I thought of becoming a solo artist or an actress, I, I would sometimes talk myself out of it. And then one day I was like, girl, for what? Why? What are you so afraid of? Yeah. Someone not 
liking you or somebody having an opinion about you, yeah. that ain't gonna pay your bills. What does that matter? There might be a few people out there that say, hey, wait a minute, I like that. I wanna buy into that. And before I knew it, I removed myself. And that's why I always say, less of me, more of you, God. Mm. Because he knows what's best. So once I got out of my own way and allowed God to really start kicking in and moving things around for me, things started to flow again. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I lead with. Now, from here on out, like I've always been like, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, you'll make it happen. I'm getting out of my own way and I'm allowing you to put this thing together. Because when God's in it and when he's doing it, you don't have to worry about nothing. Everything just happens. You're like, wait a minute, dang, that just came out of nowhere. That's called the Lord. Yes. <laughs> That's called favor. You know what I'm saying? And Look, um, Where's my offer in place? <laughs> That's what, you know, that's that's how, you know, I started to venture off out and, and start doing my own things. Because I'm telling you, after being in a group, selling millions of records, and after everything that happened, I could have gone left. Mm -hmm. I could have gone left. I could have said that was, this is the end for me. I don't, this is all I know. That's all I knew. So I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And God was like, huh, not on my watch. Yeah, yes. Not and so yes. now, you know, I, I I am motivated every no that I got, every wall that was put up around me. And, you know, every time something, every time people tried to shut me out, God shut it down for me. Yes. He would yes. kick that wall down for me. But that's because I let him lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got out of my own way and I got out of my head. And I leaped. So mm -hmm. ladies, continue, ladies and gentlemen, continue to leap. And don't yeah. allow fear to control you. It ain't gonna do you no good. Woo, listen, she if she didn't speak to y'all so she uh -huh. spoke to my soul today. Because well, thank you. I can, I gotta ask you some questions. Yes. Because I, well, at least two of them. I have so many okay. people who are entrepreneurs that follow us and check in with us all the time. Oh, wow. yeah. back there. Um, but I know I had a couple of questions of people. You started a banging huge business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, massive. So many people love your products. Thank um, you. And is there something, you know, a small, brief, short story of how, what made you decide to create the brand and, and, and how, it just, I mean, has taken over. Like, yeah. how did it all start? Yeah, so like I said earlier, my background is in nursing. So I was working as a nurse, a registered nurse for eight and a half years before I took that leap and stepped out on faith. And my story, um, like you said, you lost a, a baby. I also lost a baby, my son, in 2013. And it was when like my whole world was just totally flipped upside down. And when that happened, first of all, I went to nursing school because my mom told me to do it. Like, it wasn't something that I was necessarily passionate about. It was that you need to go to school, you got to go to college, you need to get a degree, and then you have this career, and you're going to always be able to find a job. You'll always have something to fall back on. So it was nothing that, like, you know, I've always said I wanted to be since I was a little girl. Like, I've always loved beauty products and hair products. Like, I've always been obsessed with hair. But I never knew that I can connect. Same thing, that self-doubt, you know, because I didn't see entrepreneurs growing up. I never thought that that was something that I could attain to be because I didn't see it. I was always exposed to nurses because my mom worked at a hospital. Gotcha. And so when that happened to me with my son, I, I just said, like, again, God, like, why am I here? Like, what is my purpose? Because after that happened, I had to go back to this job that I was miserable at and still dealing with what I was dealing with. And I was like, this cannot be life. And so I sought after God. I was seeking him because I didn't grow up in church. Um, so I didn't have a relationship with God. I knew I believed in God, but there was no like deep relationship. Yeah. And my husband and I, we both got saved after, you know, that happened to us. And when we got saved, like our whole lives completely shifted. My whole thought process completely yeah. shifted. 
it. So all of that self-doubt that I had, the lack of confidence, not believing in myself, I always tell people that my son, the short time that he came into this earth, taught me so much more than any other person on this earth could ever teach me. He taught yeah. me how to believe in myself. He taught me how to deepen my relationship with God. He taught me how to have self-confidence. He taught me how to have faith and just, just to go for it. And so... Yeah. You're in that situation, and it's like, listen, like you said, I don't care what nobody thinks. You know, people doubted me. They said, why are you leaving this nursing career? You make great money. You you going out here to start this company? Because I quit my job six months after starting my L, and people thought I was absolutely crazy. I started wow. on an actual hair journey, and it, that's really how it started because I used to wear my hair straight all the time, so my hair was severely heat damaged. And I wanted to see my natural curls come back, so I started – talking about it on social media, talking about hair. And that was just a conversation. And it went from this conversation to now, now I'm creating my own concoctions at home and putting it on my hair and sharing it on social media. And women started gravitating to the information. And it was like, listen, I think I'm onto something. And I saw, I, I felt fulfilled doing that. I yes. felt perfect doing that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just said, God, listen, I'm gonna just trust you because again, he gave me this vision. And I felt that, listen, I know I don't have any business experience. I know I don't come from a marketing background. I know nothing about social media marketing, but I'm going to trust God that he's going to supply me with the things that I need. And, you know, given that I didn't have an education in this, I was smart enough and God gave me the mindset to say, you know what? I know I don't know, but let me surround myself with people that do know and that can yeah. help me. And God will place those people in your path. And yes, that's exactly what. What, what he did because all I did was keep putting one foot in front of the other and just let God do the rest and he supplied all everything that I needed like it was just like things were just coming out of nowhere resources uh -huh. help and you know I started with one product just one product girl and that one product sold like crazy and that was our mint almond oil and that was in 2014 and six years later here we are in every major retail we're global yes. Um, so when I tell you, like, it's, it's truly God, like, there's no other reason why I'm here. Like, he gets all the glory because I would not be standing here if he didn't even give me the mindset to pick myself up and keep yeah. going, something like that. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> it's those moments. It's those traumatic moments in our lives sometimes yeah. that God uses to turn our eyes to him. Mm -hmm. And yes. that will, it, it pivots us. And will literally change our lives if we're obedient to the call. That's it. That's it. Because I feel like all of us, eventually, we have the call. The call happens at some point. And some of us, it, it snaps us in place and get, you know, it gets our attention. And for others, some ignore it. Mm -hmm. And then they have to go through life and keep learning the same thing over and over again until he gives them another opportunity to pivot. And hopefully they get it the next time. But you... Yeah acknowledge the call and like i said things just start flowing and start happening that's even out of your control oh yeah yes. yes so that's that's awesome i i've had so many people um ask me about you know how especially you know in talk before talking to you like how did she get started this is like a big old brand and this and it's a <laughs> black woman is it i'm like yes get excited get excited so yeah. i hope uh, for some of you uh, that you are able to um, digest all of that awesome information she just gave, if there's anything that you want to add as far as, you know, being an entrepreneur and especially during a pandemic where so many businesses are crashing. Now, granted, um, you guys, your product is still sold in every major market, every store. Um, right. So you don't have, do you, do you guys have a storefront at all? No, mm -mm. Well, you don't have office. to worry about overhead storefronts or anything like that. Um, yeah, I have a way, we, you know, that's our overhead, but yeah, no storefront. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, so that's something that you didn't have to worry about. But um, did you guys see a major shift in product buying, you know, from some of the stores? And how did you, you know, did you have to do any rebranding or anything um, to keep things moving? Yeah, no, so fortunately, and I thank God for this, like during the pandemic, we saw tremendous growth. Like it was just amazing. Awesome. We had launched even a new collection during the pandemic, which I was a little on a fence of launching it, 
But I, I was like, listen, I'm gonna just trust God and, and launch this collection. And I mean, we sold out like twice on, on our rice water collection that we launched. Yes. The, <laughs> when the pandemic hit, obviously, you know, we're all like, what the heck is going on? Like nobody knew what to expect. And I was just thinking like, should we like slow down? Like, what should we do? Cause I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure. But I have a mentor that I reached out to and I was like, what do you recommend? And he was like, keep your foot on the gas pedal. And I was like, ah! yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I was like, well, he should have told me that because it's like in, in business, no matter what the circumstance, you got to have that faith. And I was like, you know what? He's absolutely right. Like, I can't let, you know, my circumstances and the unknown, like, because I know God has me. And one thing yeah. that I pray and I continue to pray is Jeremiah 17. Like, God, let me continue to bear fruit even when it's a drought. So meaning, like, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on, it's a pandemic. Like, I'm still going to bear good fruit. And that starts with having faith. So even if you are, like, trying to start a business, don't pay attention to, like, of course, I know we're in a pandemic, but don't let that stop you. Like, again, if God gave you that vision to, to move forward, trust me, he's going to send the people to you to buy from you. Remember, when you start something, God has already assigned those people that are going to buy from you. Like, of course, your business is not going to be for everybody, but you can't focus on that. You got to focus on the majority of the people that support you and that love you. So if he gave you that thought, if he gave you that idea, and you know it came from God, just put your foot on the gas pedal and just keep pushing. And you have to just modify your strategy to fit your current reality. So if this is our reality, what are some of the, the creative things that you can do to connect with people? What are some of the things that you can do to sample your product or your service? How can you um, build relationships with, with your customers? Because I always say, like, when you are new in business, it's like when you're going on a first date. Like, your customers got to get to know you. They got to trust you. They got to feel comfortable with you. Same thing. Like, just be yourself and be authentic and just show up and over-serve. And I wow. think that people get it twisted about entrepreneurship. They think it's about money, but it's really about serving others. And if you can get that principle down pat, like, God's going to take care of everything else. But you can't go into business with the wrong mindset. And I think that a lot of people do because it's all about this but not how can I impact and change lives. So for us, like our model is, you know, just changing lives and impacting lives and, and being purpose driven. Everything that we do is intentional and we have a purpose and we want to make other people's lives better, especially the people that continue to buy from us all the time. Like our duty is to continue to serve those people. So, you know, that's, that's the foundation. The foundation is faith and then serving. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. Yes. Do you have any more questions for me? Because you, you sealed it up for me. No, listen, you asked some amazing questions. This was really great. I don't, I don't have, but I mean, listen, we can keep talking all night, but. All the, look, <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time, okay? <laughs> we get to talk about all kind of stuff. Um, yes. But yes, I, I mean, I'm sure there are so many people on here who are, who have that one thing that they can't get off their mind, that they just don't know how to take the first step to get it going or to get it off the ground. And I think what you just said will definitely propel them or push them, force their hand mm -hmm. to get that thing going. Um, yeah. But I, I just, I know fear and the finances yeah. prevent people from um, being able to start that business or take that leap they're scared because they're like i got kids mm -hmm. and i can't afford to not to quit my job and go off you know start flying right. by the seat of my pants because god put a dream in my heart yeah. <laughs> about something i know that you know yeah but god gives you wisdom right and yeah. you have to understand your current situation so for me like i don't tell people oh just go quit your job you can still work your day job and start your business you can still yes. work your day job be a mom and start your business because yes i have a husband who was still working at the time and was providing but we were also used to two household incomes so when one income is totally cut like you have to readjust your whole lifestyle strategy to, to fit his income but for me I, like you said earlier i worked as a nurse and then when my kids went to sleep i worked on my business right and then 
you know, when they were at school or, or whatever, like whenever they were not with me, I took that time to focus on my business. So that means no hanging out with friends, no going to the club, no girls night, no party. All you got to make that sacrifice and be tunnel vision and focus solely on whatever it is your dream is. And if you are a single mom, right, use your support system. If you don't have a support system, use certain friends that you trust, develop your support system, go out here and network and find people. People are out there for you. So the thing is, you can't make excuses either. And you can't feel sorry for yourself because you feeling sorry for yourself is not going to help you pursue your dream. So you have to know what situation you're in and, and, and utilize the people that are around you. Ask for help, right? There are so many ways that you can get funding now. When I started, there was not crowdfunding. There was not um, uh, these sites that you can create and, and ask for money and people donate money. There was none of that when I yes. started. I had no, to use my Go fund these over here. <laughs> yeah, there's so there are pitch competitions that you can pitch yes. for your business. So there are so many ways that you can get money now versus when I started. I was like putting my business on railway, paying for stuff when when I got paid, and then when I got paid again, paying for things again. So the thing is, it's possible, but sometimes we are our own worst enemies. So like you said earlier, once you learn how to get out of your own way and truly let God take the wheel, He's going to trust me. And I'm telling you guys this because I did not have any money. And I'm saying it again. I didn't have anything to start. Like, oh, my paychecks was, like, paying my bills. So I had, like, nothing left over. And so when yeah. I tell you guys, like, God will supply it. He will. You just got to trust and not think about, like, or, or fearful that you don't have the finances. Just do it and just watch how things just start falling into place. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Girl, you gonna have to use this. I already got to get up in the middle of the night to feed, but I'm gonna start. I gotta break out my pen and pad again. I think it's some. I think I'm. I got something that's stirring up on the inside. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Might need to put that in the work. Might. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might have to do that. Um. Yeah. But man, thank you. It's and especially I. I have to say that this conversation comes right on time, guys. We have a black woman that's about to be vice president. Did you ever think in your lifetime? that we would have an African-American woman about to take office, like become the vice president of the free world. Like, mm -hmm. that is amazing. Ms. Kamala yeah. Harris, like, I just, I say thank you so much I, for everything. Thank you in advance yep. for everything yep. that you're about to do for this country. Yes. You are the Black yes. Girl Magic that we need in office. And yes. I am super duper excited um, to have a daughter right now. Yeah. That she was born into a time like this. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? That just makes me feel so good. It makes yep. me feel so good. It brings me so much joy. So we speaking about this as two mommypreneurs. We yep. have to be excited that we can show our kids that it can happen for us. Mm -hmm. And it can yep. happen as a woman, as a black woman. Yes. Um, so, so yes, I'm super duper duper excited. <laughs> I had to bring that up towards the end of our, our chat, but um, I know that's coming up really, really soon. And there's so many people out here that are excited about it. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. And I'm going to be glued to the TV and just, yes, you know, it's like you thought when Barack was president, like, Honest, I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you. I thought that was like, it was going to be a wow for another person of color yeah. with office. <laughs> so I ain't going to lie. So now that we have another woman of, especially woman of color Wonder. in office, it's just like, whoo, listen, the power of black women. Listen, if y'all ain't know that it was our time, it's We got a good cook in the kitchen, baby. <laughs> Yes, 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 it's amazing. Well, listen, I this I enjoyed our conversation, and I just want to tell you, just keep being great, keep just moving, keep being a great mom. You are a great mom to your kids. You. You're a great businesswoman, and listen, you are too. Thank you, thank you. And keep your head up. Don't let the naysayers and negativity. Don't let anybody steal your peace. Just keep going and keep being great and beautiful at the same time. Okay. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate you. I mean, you. I, I enjoy our conversations, of course, offline, but 
Thank you. Shout out to Dora. I see her in here. Hey, Dora. Um, but uh, guys, get your Mayel. Get your Mayel yes. on. It is changing not only my hair, the rice water collection. You guys hear me <laughs> talk about it all the time. I use the oil on my hair, my, my hair and my daughter's hair. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, and there's the mask as well that I, I just put it in uh, about three days ago and it still feels good. I mean, my hair <laughs> still, ugh, I can't even deal. Um, but is there, I know you guys were on the Mayo page, so you guys can always go to their IG, uh, their website for more information. They're always putting out, they're always putting out new collections. Um, yeah. But the stuff really works. I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't believe in it and if I didn't <laughs> use it myself. So, um, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much for your time today and thanks for having me. It's like yeah. we, were put, we were trying to get each other on each other's uh, check ins, <laughs> our shows, and we just ended up yeah, here. Yeah, here now and it works. So, yes. yes, thank you yes. so much. Thank you so, so much. And you have a great week. You too, you too. Have a great week on purpose. <laughs> Come on now. Absolutely. I sure will. All right. Good to see you, Mama. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.